So I heard you're into board games. Well, you've definitely come to the right place. This is November's monthly roundup, the video where I talk to you about, well, all of the changes to my board game collection. <laughs> Cue the Christmas music. It's officially December, I guess we're allowed to do that now. Um, so yeah, welcome to a whole other month. Um, I guess it's the time of year where we're all gonna start buying some board games so that you know we can have either Christmas presents or things to do over Christmas. Um, am I excited? I'm not sure yet. Um, but the games now are starting to look exciting. Um, so yeah, welcome, hello, nice to meet you. Um, this is my monthly roundup video and what this means is that this video talks about the changes to my own board game collection. Um, and this is broken up into particular sections. So new games I've acquired, games I've been playing, and usually some sort of wish list, and then there's kind of a chit chat personal thing at the end. But I've put in all of those numbered tags bits so you can hop your way through as appropriate. Um, this month is interesting um, because previous months games have been kind of on the light side. I haven't really felt like playing games, haven't really bought many games. Well, um, taking a break seems to have really ramped things up and I have a ton of games to talk about this month. So what it's looked like is going to happen is that as I tell you about the games we just got, these are gonna be part of the games I've been playing because they basically are. Um, what I might do though is split up the games I've not played yet into the games I've acquired and the games I have played, which are also new, into the played section. But you can follow along at will. So yeah, I got a lot to talk about, which is kind of exciting. Um, yeah, I'm starting to feel a bit more of the love for the, for the board games. Um, this is not entirely dependent on how many of them I can purchase, I swear. Um, but what I'll do is I'll jump in with um, some of the review copies that have been sent to me. So um, yeah, it's always a good place to start and tell you what's been covering in those. Um, so the first one you'll probably notice I've put a video out for already. I didn't realize I'd done this in a month. I'm so proud of myself. Um, and this is the game Brian Baru, The High King of Ireland from Osprey Games. And of course, an Irishy themed game fits me incredibly well. Um, so for those of you who haven't watched the video yet, maybe you might want to after my mini description. Um, but what the Brian Baru game is about is that you are a ruler in Ireland and you're trying to unite the country um, to become the High King. There's some interesting aspects to this game. The first part is that the majority of it is trick taking um, and the other half, half is area control. And how this works is that you will play for tricks um, with the rest of your players and whoever wins the trick gets to do something out on the board. Um, and What's interesting about this one and the thing that really perplexed me because I don't particularly enjoy trick taking games is the fact that even if you don't win a trick that there is a positive, there is something to do. Um, there's a number of cool tracks to play with. Um, the game is very pretty and it was fun actually. Um, it, it had an, an interesting reaction. It's a minimum three players though. You've been warned, I know, I was sad about it as well. Meaning I had to somehow acquire three players, so thank you to all of the Bryans who came and played Brian Peru with me. Um, and on paper, it doesn't sound like the most exciting game in the world, but gameplay itself is really interesting. And I think it's a really thoughtful and considered game. I think it's really well put together and it's interesting. And plus it's got Irish. So um, that was really cool for once to open a board game with a map of a place I recognized. I'm like, oh, look. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I really um, quite liked um, Brian Brew despite the trick taking. Um, I'm not sure how often I would take it off a shelf. I think it doesn't quite hit the mark for me, but I do think it's a very good game and a lot of people will enjoy it. Um, some of this is tainted by the fact that it will require three players. So that's um, Brian Brew, High King of Ireland. You should totally go check that out. So the next um, review copy that has come is actually a game I reviewed a long time ago when it was on Kickstarter. And this is Factory 42 from Dragon Dawn Productions. Um, so as some of you may or may not remember, um, this is a game about workers in a factory, a worker placement game about workers. 
yeah, it's got a kind of a, I don't want to say communist vibe, but maybe something like that. Um, and you're trying to basically get goods through um, using your workers and achieve specific goals that the kind of the that you're supposed to be getting. Um, so you can see where it's fun there. Um, it's got a, a cube tower in it, which is something I haven't seen for some time. It had some adorable little carts and it was kind of mean. That's how I remember it. Um, but this, of course, was all in the Kickstarter version. and. I now have a, a regular version and I'm dying to see what that's actually like, what kind of changes have been made and such and such. Um, but I haven't got to it yet because it's kind of a big game. So it's it's on the list. Um, and the second thing that arrived from Dragon Dawn Productions, I know less about. And this is a game called Mei Shao, the Orkney Saga. And from what it says on the back of it, it is a two player only game. It seems to be like a, a survival horror kind of game. Um, this isn't something I would normally have picked up. And so when I opened it up just to see what was inside, I got very excited when I saw what I thought were kind of swan tokens, like little meeples of swans. And then the first piece of art I saw was kind of graphic. I don't know, like, you know what? It fits with what this game is supposed to be, but I hadn't read the back of the box at that point. I'd literally just opened it up. Um, and I was just like, ooh, ooh, it gave me, it gave me a, a, a pause for thought. And I won't lie, that image, um, kept not quite kept me up at night but i couldn't stop thinking about it and i was debating whether or not i should sh i kind of share it on the internet and see if you know if you've ever played a game where the art has really affected you i was curious but um i didn't want people to necessarily think of the game in the wrong way either i think you know you should know what you're getting into when you buy this that it's going to be something like that so i do looking f i do look forward to playing it i just haven't got i haven't got back to it yet because it can be a bit of a, a surprise i think i want to be emotionally ready to take on something like that um so yeah that could actually be really cool to play though a two-player survival game so we'll have to see what that's all about um so yeah so i was very excited to receive those in the post all right, on to regular game acquisition. Um, and most of this is entirely the, the fault of going for hill walks. Um, as some of you may remember, um, once a week or minimum, I've been going for um, a walk in a faraway place, which is lovely wooded and beach, and it's been entirely gorgeous. But the problem is, is that we pass through the town with our favorite board game shop on the way home. So it means that at least once a week, we're stopping into the shop to see what's there, which has greatly increased by uh, board game shopping. Um, so this is probably why so many of these games are here. Um, and I'm gonna start with the first one we got at the beginning of the month, which is Parks. Yeah, I'm, I'm really behind on getting into this. So many people seem to be such a big fan of it. They talked about the game trays, how beautiful it was. They're not entirely wrong. It is all of those things. It is a very stunning production of a game. And what Parks is about is a game in which you are visiting the different national parks in America. Um, but what the mechanics are is basically there is a, a line that your meeple can travel. And if you stop at certain spots, you can get particular resources. And you use these resources then to buy the cards that are, represent the, the parks themselves. Um, and so it's up to you to decide when you want to go where. Now, you usually have two meeples, um, so you know you can kind of maneuver things as you might like. Um, but of course, you well, you can stop on other people's spots, but it'll cost you. You only have one token to do that with. Um, so yeah, it really is kind of a, a reordering the line game, except you are the orderer of the line. So it is it is nice and light um, in that sense. Probably a little bit too light for me, but I think the game makes up for it by being just so darn pretty. Um, it's very easy going and very chill. And it's the kind of thing, yeah, I think you could just show to anybody um, that they would enjoy. So um, yeah, part part. Parks is, Parks is exactly what everybody told me it was going to be, um, which is grand and quite happy with that. Um, so that was the first of our nature games this month, Parks. Um, the second is Cascadia. So Cascadia is <laughs> another nature game. Um, they seem to be really popular at the minute, right? Like we've got a lot of nature games going on. Um, so Cascadia is kind of a game about you creating territories for animals to come and live in. Um, how it works is you build out your own kind of, 
well, territory, I suppose, with, with little hexagon pieces. Um, and you're gonna want some of the, the terrain types to match and things like that, because certain animals will only go in particular terrain types. Um, but the real core of the game here is about creating patterns using your animals. And each animal has its own different way of scoring. So for instance, a fox would like pairs of animals around it um, or things like that, or a salmon like to be in a run, so they all have to be connected. And so there are all these rules in play at the same time that you're trying to follow as best you can. Um, I think it's a, an interesting puzzle. It's, um, I think it's hard initially to wrap your head around the different shapes from the different animals and how they score. Um, but once you have kind of the first game under your belt, it becomes a lot easier. Um, there's some beautiful art on the animal cards. It's from Beth Sobel, so I might be surprised if it wasn't pretty. But I do feel like the terrain tiles themselves aren't necessarily the nicest. Um, but I can understand why they are the way they are. You're trying to fit, you know, this mishmash of terrains together. Um, so far, it's been fun. Um, I, 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 li I like what's in the box and it's been enjoyable. And it's definitely more thinky than Parks is, so I appreciate that quite a bit too. It's a very fluid kind of puzzle. Um, so yeah, so that's been Cascadia. Let's see what's next. So next up is a game I've been after for a long, long, long time and it's been out of print and every time it came up for sale on a secondhand group it was gone before I had a chance to get there. So I now officially have the new and fresh version of Tyrants of the Underdark. Um, so maybe you've heard of this before, maybe you don't, maybe you're into D&D &D because this is a, a Dungeons and Dragons type of game it's set in the universe. Um, I don't know a ton about D&D lore despite role playing, um, but I did recognize some of the places on the map here. Um, so it's kind of connected. Um, so what's it about though? So basically this is you are kind of lords of the underworld and you are trying to gather power to your side. And the game is part deck builder, part area control. And you'll be using your deck to control areas of the board. So how this works is the board has a bunch of different locations and you are putting out your tiny little discs out um, to win majorities. Um, there is much um, fighting back and forth between you and the other players in this game because places are limited. Every time you kill or take away someone else's kind of influence token, there are victory points to be had. And by controlling certain cities, you can get bonuses as well. Um, so that's kind of the interesting part of the air control bit. The deck building part is really, really fun. Um, you know, if you play Dominion, you, you know what this is about. Um, and what's interesting about it is there's a number of decks that you can mix together um, in different ways so that the game plays very different each time because each deck has its own way of winning and scoring and such. Um, so I was having an awful lot of fun with the decks. Um, I always appreciate a deck building game where there is a way to remove cards from your deck later. I like that, that mechanic is here. And I found like the cards were interesting and fun to put together. I really liked it a lot. I less like the area control portion. Um, and this is possibly because it is at two players, but actually I felt the same at three, which is that there is a set number of places to go. There's a certain number of places that are always worth more points than others to hold. So why would you really ever go for anything else? I think it's such an important part of the game points wise that you can't ignore it. But although I've heard people do just that, um, but for me, I think it felt really disjointed from what we were doing and it felt very samey to me, this area control part. Um, but I do love the deck building bit, so I'm a bit on the fence about it. Come to think of it, I actually think the area control portion would be vastly improved by having standees or miniatures as opposed to just these tiny little discs to represent your influence. Um, I think it would make the game much more tactile and slightly more impressive because, you know, putting in a disc to get rid of your disc isn't as fun as kind of kicking out your miniature or something like that. Um, but yeah, overall, this, this game is most of the way there in my book. Might just be me, everyone else seemed to have enjoyed it. So there you go. I just felt like they didn't quite go together. Nee, that's it. Um, if you've played Tyrant to the Underdark, let me know what you think. How do you feel about those little cardboard disky things? Because you need like a ton of them um, to play with. So I just found it a little bit fiddly. All right. So next on the list, and yes, the list is still going, um, is a game I got given from a friend of a friend because they didn't want it anymore. 
Yeah, that's always a good sign for a game. And this is Guards Guards from Z-Man Games, um, based on the Terry Pratchett novels, um, I'm going to assume, or the, the, the disc world as a whole. Um, and for anybody who's a fan of Terry Pratchett, you will know there are a number of board games related to him, his works, um, out there. And some of them have a reputation for being truly awful, and some of them have a reputation for being good and playable. And I'm pretty sure the Guards Guards was not in the good section. So I put some feelers out on the internet when it arrived going, you know, are there are there good games? Is this one OK? And um, yeah, this game didn't get good reviews. People, didn't, people didn't seem to like it a lot. So I've not played it yet for that reason. Um, but it doesn't mean I won't. Um, it did come for free, so I guess I'm not going to complain about it. Would I have picked it up on my own? Um, probably not. Um, I am wary of IP games, to be very honest. So, yeah, um, it would have been probably, yeah, it would have stayed where it was. But sure, we'll try it out and we'll see what happens. And hopefully I'll report back next month with that one. All right, next. So let's move on to the first Kickstarter release game I've seen in many a moon. Now, I know I don't back that many things on Kickstarter, so I can't be expecting them to show up. But this is a Kickstarter that showed up exactly when it intended to and when it was supposed to, which is always really impressive. So this is It's a Wonderful Kingdom. And it comes from the, the same company that designed It's a Wonderful World. And you might have heard me talk about that before because um, it's one of my favourite... I don't want to call it, it is deck, but in the tableau building games, you know, resource management. It's a game in which you play cards and they request colored cubes to be played. But then once you play the card, it, they make further colored cubes for you to use later and so on and so forth until you win and there are victory points. Um, I just love the kind of aesthetic of It's a Wonderful World. It's kind of this weird futuristic past, you know, going on. The art is really lovely. I like how the cards all worked it's a it's a fantastic game and i've played both the expansions and the legacy version and i we still love it so when we heard there was it's a wonderful kingdom which seems to be a fantasy version of the same game we were all in on it and it, it showed up on time we were so excited we got we got it to the table within a couple of hours of it arriving and already there were a bit of a problem. So normally in It's a Wonderful Kingdom, um, you draft your cards at the start of the round um, to have in your hand to be able to play. But uh, we have always had a problem with drafting at two players. It just seems to be a little messy. Um, and also it takes a lot of time. And so what we used to do was we would take a full hand of cards and then add three and then return three of them afterwards. So that saved the kind of drafting thing, but also gave you a little bit of choice in what cards were in your hand. Um, and so we heard there's supposed to be a special way to draft for two players in It's a Wonderful Kingdom. And so, woo, we were excited. Um, and then it wasn't exciting at all um, because how it works is that it's kind of a nice split you choose idea, which is, so on my turn, I have two cards and I can put one in front of me, one in front of you, or none in front of you and two in front of me, or two in front of you, or none in front of me. And then my opponent gets to pick whichever pile of cards they want, right? So it's got that kind of, ooh, what have I given you? What have I given me feeling? However, there are cards you play with called Calamity cards, which are just straight up worth negative victory points. And you can place them upside down um, with other cards, you know, to kind of trick your opponent maybe into taking some. And the minute I heard that I was really turned off, I'm like the notion of I'm just giving you negative stuff for fun doesn't really appeal to me. And I was like, is there any use for these Calamity cards? Is there anything else you can do with them, at least if you're given them, maybe to get rid of them or something like that? No, there's no way. It's just a negative four points for forever. That's assuming you only ended up with one. Um, and I didn't, that didn't sit well with me at all. Um, the second problem is that, so we, it arrives and there are a number of modules to play with. And Initially, every time a game show, shows up, I want to play it just the basic, the normal version, and then we'll add in the extra things once we know how to play everything right. Um, so we go to set up the normal version and the rule book warns us that this is the only time you will play with the regular mode um, because it's not very good. It's intended to play with the, the modules. So we were a little appalled by that, but we're like, okay, let's go. So we do the mean drafting thing and we hate it, um, unsurprisingly. 
so we were like we'll just hand each other cards instead like we might normally do to see how everything plays and the first thing i notice is that there is a color resource missing so in it's a wonderful world there are five resources and they trigger in a particular order in this there's only four and what it meant was that it felt like you had to play all of the cards they all felt very samey um as in you needed the same resources for pretty much everything um, there were a number of cards that weren't worth points at all when you played them and it seemed to focus very heavily on just multiplying a specific type of card. So much so that in both games, both myself and my husband ended up building the same deck which is like, oh, um, I also collected a number of so soldier tokens. There are tokens in It's a Wonderful World and they're usually worth a victory point each at the end of the game. Um, the soldier tokens weren't worth any points at all. So I was like, why are they here? I didn't find anything to benefit them. No, that's in a different module. And in the different module, which we then tried, you can spend these tokens. You have basically like a, a character um, who has an ability and you can use th these tokens on that ability. Um, and the ability is good. I'm not going to deny the ability is good, but it didn't solve the problem of, well, we still only have four colors to play with. Um, so yeah, we ended up building the same kind of decks again. Um, so yeah, it was a serious letdown. There are other modules, one of which involves um, area control on a board, which you kind of track your way up and you may or may not get rewards, which we were re weren't really into. If anything, actually, we were just so let down by this point. I was like, I don't think we want to go any further. Um, and I felt really sad about it because both myself and my husband were really excited about this one. And uh, like if it had just been fantasy cards with the same setup as It's a Wonderful World, we would have been delighted, I suppose. Um, you know what? Maybe this just appeals to a different type of player than we are. Um, we don't want to really play mean and I don't really want to be doing the, the same kinds of things every time I play. Um, so yeah, I did not joy, enjoy It's a Wonderful Kingdom, unfortunately, and I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of sad about, about that. Um, I, I think, I don't know, maybe I had my expectations too high. Maybe this is all to do with me. Maybe everyone else loves it. But for us, it was just definitely a letdown. All right, we're getting there. We're, we're, we're creeping ever closer towards the end of the pile. Um, so let's go from a negative story to a positive story, shall we? Um, so last weekend on, <laughs> on our, our trip out and then, you know, ending in the board game shop, my husband got something he's been tempted by for a while. And he is a very big Terraforming Mars fan. I'm pretty sure he would call that one of his favorite games without a doubt. And we have all the expansions and everything for Terraforming Mars. Not the big box, but you know, we'll, we'll work on that someday. It just seems pricey. So when Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition came out, I was just like, no. No, we have terraforming Mars. We don't need a mini terraforming Mars. Um, but he was quite insistent that he wanted to try it. So I, I didn't really get much say in this, but I, I wasn't really expecting much out of it. Um, so terraforming Mars Ares Expedition is indeed a smaller terraforming Mars. Um, and what it does is it combines the, the things you like about terraforming Mars with the things you might like about uh, from Race for the Galaxy. So for those of you who haven't played Race for the Galaxy, the biggest feature that it has, um, and it's also in San Juan, is that there are phases. You'll have five phases or whatever to choose from. And in each of those phases, particular actions are going to happen. But everyone gets to choose one and all of them get to happen, you know, once they're revealed, right? So you could choose to draw cards. I could choose to play, put a card into play and we will both get to do that. And there is a benefit if you're the person who chose that particular phase, right? So there's a couple of games that do this now. It's not... I don't know if it's as special as it used to be, but it's a mechanic I've always loved. And so they've combined that with terraforming Mars, which is where, you know, you're terraforming planet, but mostly you're playing cards to get symbols and make money um, and produce things and use those to affect the planet. Um, so I was like, how can this be bad? I don't know. I expected not to feel very original. 
So the first thing to note is I think there's some sort of special edition because it came with like little game trays in it. And because there's only two of us, we had our own little game tray each for keeping track of our goals and things like that. Um, we also had recessed player boards. I don't think this comes with the regular version. Um, they were almost unnecessary. And then of course a big pile of cards. Um, and much like Terraforming Mars, you have a handful of cards, you're deciding what to do in each of your phases and you are placing down cards that will enhance your production or perhaps give you actions and you're dealing with a very very small like miniaturized version of the terraforming mars board now you don't get to put your discs out on it you just flip over ocean tiles for bonuses here and the real focus is on the tracks where you're trying to raise the oxygen and raise the temperature um i'm not gonna lie this this is a very tidied up version of Terraforming Mars. One which has vastly improved in graphical design and such. Um, my husband would say the rule book has somehow got worse, but the graphics and how easy it is to read the cards and the placement of all of the symbols has really improved. The art has gone up a notch as well. The game is very good looking. And it's still all that fun feeling from Terraforming Mars, which to me is, I'm playing a bundle of cards and I'm making a bunch of money, woo. Um, and it's got all that the phases thing actually works really well with it um because you can't play the same phase one after the other so you're having to plan things out in what order everything is going to happen i particularly like the fact that one of the changes one of the phases allows you to choose when to produce so when to make money or when to make plant tokens or energy or whatever um so you could technically do that every second turn if you wanted to um which is nice because in terraform mars you could be out of money and have to wait a while for your opponent to do everything the simultaneous turns, um, I don't think it sped us up, but I'll be honest, like our first game of this was two and a half hours. Um, and I suppose, yeah, the length of this game is going to depend on how quickly you want to terraform the planet and end the game. Um, but overall, overall, I really, I did like it. Like we went back and played a second game the night after and I was asking the question of, do we really need terraforming Mars now if we've got this kind of slicker version um and it's something i'm gonna have to think about um i would like for there to be more cards we did go through an awful lot of cards like the second time we played i felt like i was seeing the same cards i'd seen the first time round. so yeah a bit of variety there would be great i wonder have they any expansions listed in the mix um but yeah if you're a fan of terraforming mars um i'd be amazed if you didn't enjoy this um yeah i think it's just quite a, a tidy um kind of elegantly done terraforming mars yeah so there you go i was very impressed um and totally surprised by this uh considering i was playing it only as an indulgence um but it worked out quite well all right what's next because we're still going i think we are down to the final two all right second to last this is interesting for many reasons um mostly because i didn't buy this game but i won it on a board game geek contest I know, right? Those things really happen. Um, my husband has control of my um, Board Game Geek account. And when he's bored at work, I believe he fills out all those quizzes and stuff to see um, if we could win anything. So this is the second time he's won something, but this one's much more exciting than most because this is Golem from Cranio Creations. Um, so Golem seems to have been going, uh, doing the rounds or whatever there for Essen. Um, I don't really know anything about it other than its game designers. Um, it's got a very creepy cover um, and it's got Simone Luciani's name attached to it. So we expect there to be many, many tracks of things. There are marbles in the box. I think it's something to do with creating a powerful golem, but I've not opened it up and played it yet because it is one of the heavier games here. So, you know, you want to set aside a bit of time for it and make sure you have the brain power, no less, to be able to absorb all of that information. But um, A, it was lovely to win a game. Hmm. Would we have bought this normally? <clears throat> I don't know. I think we we had enough of Smoke Luciani. Not that he's a bad designer, but all, all of their games felt like there was just one track too many. Um, so yeah, maybe there's something there's something interesting here to be had. Um, looking forward to trying that out. So that's kind of awesome. And then the last thing on our list, which I think is actually, I'm going to be sure it is the last thing. Yeah, it looks like the last thing. Um, so, so my birthday is coming up in a week or so. And one part of my birthday present has been um, a board game. 
and it's one I love and I don't talk enough about and I really should. I don't know how I'd put a video together for it without being embarrassing, but I hope by now that you guys have heard of Drop Mix. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's Drop Mix about? Drop Mix is, um, I wanna say part toy, part board game, but I, I also don't wanna call it a toy. Part experience, part board game. So a number of years ago while watching the Dice Tower, I remember spotting Drop Mix. And what it is, is a game where you play cards that make musical notes on the, the kind of a keyboard that you have. And what how this works is there's a microchip in each of the cards and when it hits the, the board, the electronic board, it'll play a piece of music. And depending on which position you play it in, um, it'll be like the bass of the track or the vocal of the track or things like that. And so you can, play by yourself or play with others where you're putting down these cards to make music. Um, most of the game really is about matching colors and numbers kind of at the same time. Um, and there are a couple of different modes in that, that you can play. And I remember when I saw it, I was, I, I was like completely enamored with the idea of it, but it was very expensive um, when it initially came out. So I kind of forgot about it. And then about two years ago, my husband appeared with it on Christmas morning for me um, and I was blown away. Um, I, it is really quite fun um, to play. It feels like a very Christmas game actually as well because you could play it with friends and family and such. Um, and so this year for my birthday, he got me a drop mix pack um, with some new songs in it. So I got the pop version. Is that what it says? It's over there somewhere. Yeah, I got the pop version this time. So I have new snippets of songs to add in. I keep meaning to look up what the rock one is all about if I get time, but prices for these vary quite a bit. So kind of need to be watching for when they go cheap or not. But um, <laughs> it's a game I really love and I really enjoy and I wish I played more of it. And I wish the Bluetooth connected with your phone because you have to use your phone to play this was slightly better, but I probably should blame my phone, phone for that. So yeah, I'm really excited. I'm not allowed to play with it yet though. I have to wait for another bit before I'm allowed to give it a go. But um, yeah, so that was the last board game that made its way into our house. Um, yeah, Drop Mix is so much fun. If you think that might be up your street, go look it up. You'd be, you, yeah, it's so good. Um, right, so I think this is all of the new games that came to my house this month. Good Lord, it is a pile. Yeah, an absolute pile. Um, but you know what? I'm glad. I'm glad because things have been quiet the last month or two. It has been deserving. Um, so we'll go very quickly to the games I've been playing section and then we will motor on to the section after that. OK, so games I've been playing. We don't really have time for this because I've kind of told you all of this, but I will mention one thing. I did play Robo Rally. Hurrah! So um, those of you who might have watched my video about um, the games I play least in my collection will have noted that I had Robo Rally down there somewhere. And when um, we had a visitor last week, I managed to convince them to play Robo Rally with us. So um, that is one thing off of my checklist. Hurrah, Robo Rally. OK, cool. So moving on to the final section, which is general chit chat. OK, so I'm pretty sure this video has been absolutely ginormous already. So this is going to be a very quick check in. Hello. How are you? Kind of affair. Um, so, yeah, November. You know what? I think things are settling down just a little bit around here um, by deciding to just like not do anything under pressure or just, you know, look, I'll get to it tomorrow if I can't get to it today. It feels like my my feelings for board games have come back a bit, which is really, really nice. I felt like I've wanted to play things or also that I've wanted to make videos as well. I, I think it's just so easy to have an idea of yourself and what you should be doing and to enforce that, whether it's true or otherwise, because it feels true for you. Um, and so trying to teach myself to be OK with not being switched on all of the time um, has been its own challenge, but I'd, I'd like to think it's been a little bit of a reward too. So yeah, so I got lots of games played this last month, which is a, a big change. And I got plenty of games in, which is good. And I got my Brian Brew review done in under a month. I'm very proud of myself for that. Um, especially because it needed three players. That was tough to organize. 
But um, otherwise, yeah, so still going for all the walks and adventures and stuff. If you want pictures of those, check out my Twitter account. It's usually like on Sundays. <laughs> I do the here's the picture of photos thread. Um, I'm absolutely convinced that I'm obsessed with taking photos of just Woodland Path. Um, but yeah, it gives you an idea of um, where I've been out to if you care about that kind of stuff. Um, otherwise, I've been doing some painting. Um, I put one of my favorite miniatures on a boat. That was very exciting stuff. And yeah, just kind of doing a few bits around the house and things as well, because Christmas is starting to come in, like the ads are on the TV now. So I'm doomed. It's definitely going to happen. Um, I don't know about you lot, but Christmas is kind of a very triggery time of year for me. Um, and so I try very hard to keep like my Christmas to a minimum um, for as long as I can. But it looks like this year I'm not getting a chance. So we'll just have to kind of grin and bear it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, otherwise things are things are doing good. I'm still making stuff for the channel. The important thing to note is that next month there will not be a monthly roundup video. There will be the Golden Board Game Awards that I do every year with my husband, where we have a bunch of crazy categories and we talk about the, the games, I suppose, we've been playing or things we liked or didn't like. If you have any suggestions for categories, um, please post them in the comments below or anything you'd like us to answer. Um, also, that works too. Um, we'll, we might take that on board. And all going well, we should be making that um, over the Christmas holidays and it should be here in time for the new year oh my god the new year I feel like this year only only just begun <laughs> um, so yeah so that would be cool if you want to do that um, yeah otherwise we're all good and I'm just going to let you guys go and sure we will meet somewhere on social media come and check that out say hi I'd love to hear from you and I want to hear also what you've been playing over the month I like hearing about your new games all right, everybody, take care. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.